Um, can you speak to what prompted the president to order this review of Russian hacking into the presidential election? Sure, Darlene, and we, we should just clarify that um, the president earlier this week instructed the intelligence community to conduct a full review of the pattern of malicious cyber activity related to our presidential election cycle. So he's requested this report be completed and submitted to him uh, before the end of his term. As you all know, in 2008, there were intrusions into both the Obama and McCain campaigns. There haven't been any noted episodes in 2012, but the president asked uh, to go back with what we know now to make sure that we're using every tool possible um, as a means of due diligence. And then, of, of course, in 2016, uh, our intelligence community determined that there was malicious cyber activity intended to interfere with our elections. Uh, in the high confidence assessment that was released uh, this past October, uh, the intelligence community made very clear that this was activity directed uh, by the highest levels of the Russian government. So as we've made clear, uh, we are committed to ensuring the integrity of our elections, uh, and this report will dig into this pattern of malicious cyber activity timed to our elections, take stock of our defensive capabilities, and capture lessons learned to make sure that we brief uh, members of Congress and stakeholders as appropriate. Will the review go all the way back to the up to 08? Yeah, so we're going to actually, what the President asked for is a review to look at um, malicious cyber activity timed to our presidential election cycle. And so uh, it will be broader than just looking at this uh, past election. Okay. Will it also look at whether state election systems were tampered with, or will it just be about email intrusions? Sure. Sort of well, what we uh, determined um, in mid-November a few weeks ago now is that state election systems did not, the federal government did not detect any increased malicious cyber activity on election day or related to the administering of the elections. So um, we've already made that determination, and that's something we've announced publicly from here. But um, in terms of uh, what this review will look at, um, this is going to be a review that's conducted by uh, the intelligence community. As you know, in that October uh, statement that we released, that was released by um, uh, the Department of um, uh, National Intelligence and Department of Homeland Security. Obviously, there's other agencies uh, that work on those issues, including the FBI, the Department of Justice, and the Department of State. Public. So uh, we're going to make public as much as we can. Uh, obviously, you can imagine a report like this is going to contain highly, you know, sensitive and even classified information, perhaps. So um, when that report is submitted, uh, we're going to take a look. We want to make sure we brief Congress and relevant stakeholders, like possibly um, the state administrators who actually uh, operationalize the elections. So um, uh, given that the directive to, to um, launched this review was just this week. Uh, we want to make sure that that process unfolds um, uh, in all due accord. So. so you mentioned that this new review of Russian hacking activity will go back to 2008. Is that the main way that it differs from the FBI investigation that's already done? I see. Uh, it's a good question. And the FBI investigation was looking at specific acts uh, that we saw over the summer and fall of this year. So. Uh, as you know, they, they looked at the hacks at campaign committees like the DNC um, and other malicious cyber activity that, that we were detecting. At the time, they determined that this is activity that could have only been directed uh, from the highest levels of the Russian government. So yes, this is going to put that activity in a greater context. Uh, that's going to look at pat the pattern of this uh, happening from foreign actors dating all the way back to 2008. Okay, and the response that's coming now from the foreign ministry in Russia is that uh, they're saying many times they've asked Americans to provide full information but never had any response. Is that true? I mean, have you guys not wanted to have those conversations with Lavrov or others? Is this something you wanted to kind of keep to yourselves for now? Or wh what can you say about the handling of this with respect to Russia? Sure. I think to the contrary, Michelle, this isn't something we've tried to keep to ourselves. The president uh, himself has made clear uh, that this is activity that's unacceptable. Uh, that is outside the bounds of... In terms of, like, the greater detail that they said they were looking for? Uh, I, I'm not aware of any sort of specific request that they've asked for, but the president has made clear that um, uh, his views on this and that, that, that malicious cyber activity, specifically uh, malicious cyber activity timed to our elections, uh, has no place uh, in the international community. Unfortunately, this activity is not new to Moscow. Uh, we've seen them do this for years, uh, try and meddle in elections and engage in similar activities uh, in Europe and in uh, across Asia. So uh, they unfortunately have a long uh, record of this, um, but the president has made clear um, 
to President Putin um, that this is unacceptable, but that's not the only channel of communication. Um, I do know that Secretary Kerry has talked to his counterpart, and we have other national security officials who have made this clear um, to their counterparts in Moscow. Okay, and will this include a look at any potential attempts or activity at local levels, or is this only going to look at um, kind of a, a bigger or a federal level? Well, I think um, uh, these agencies will have to take a look at what we saw in 2008, 2012, and 2016. So I think that um, this is going to be a deep dive, that this will be a, a review that is, is broad and deep at the same time. And so they're going to look at uh, where the activity leads them to look at. In other words, that, um, again, like I mentioned, in 2012, there was no noted uh, uh, episode of this nature, but knowing what we know now, using the tools that we have now, um, we can go back and see if there was anything that, that was missed back then. How is there going, I mean, if this is going to be so broad and deep, as you said, um, going beyond what the FBI took a pretty long time to do, and going back to 2008, how is there time to, to do this? Well, it's a huge priority. This is a major priority for, for the President of the United States. Uh, he directed uh, uh, his intelligence community and national security officials um, to take this on. He expects that report to be issued uh, to him uh, before he leaves office. You're right, there's going to be a lot of work to be done. But like you've also said, there's already been a lot of work done about the episode uh, this year in 2016. So what we want to do is, is, is put that into context over the past eight years to see if we can sort of develop patterns, take stock of where we are, and make sure that we do have uh, the right defensive capabilities in place. When you see the allegations from some members of Congress and others um, that there could be evidence that Russia was actually trying to <coughs> influence the election in a particular way, will this also look at potential motivations and, and you know whether that leaning was there or not? Well, we know that again in October when the intelligence community released their high confidence assessment. Just quick, was it high confidence? Because I thought the statement was just confidence, and this is the first time I've heard high confidence. Uh, Hans, I should double check that, but I'm. Pretty sure it was high confidence. I can read it to you. Uh, let us take this because um, uh, when I was briefed out here, I was told it was high confidence, but maybe we should just sync up. Um, so, in the breadth of it, will it also look at whether they tried to influence the election in a particular way? Is it safe to say that it would look at motivations? Well, I want to be clear here that um, this is not a effort to challenge the outcome of the election, that we have acknowledged um, uh, who won the election. It wasn't the candidate that the president campaigned for. Um, and so the president has actually uh, gone out of his way to make sure that we are providing for a seamless transition of power. Um, so we're not calling into question the election results. We are taking seriously our responsibility to protect the integrity of those elections. Is it safe to say that it, it will look at motivations and goals as well as the technical side of what was done? Well, I think um, in that assessment that was released in October, um, uh, it, it, it called, it made clear that this was an attempt to interfere in our elections. So um, uh, whether or not they dig deeper into motives, I'm not sure that will be a part of this review, um, but there's some things we already know for sure. Thanks a lot. Um, on the uh, assessment that's being done, the review that's being done, um, is there an effort to get this done quickly before the president leaves because the president-elect has said publicly that he doesn't think Russia was involved or that there was a 400-pound man somewhere in a basement involved? Is there an effort to like get this out and on the record before the new administration comes in? I think the president wanted this um, done under his watch because he takes it very seriously. And um, uh, this is something that the president has been monitoring uh, closely for all eight years now. Uh, we've placed a huge premium on cybersecurity. Um, we, uh, and that's actually reflected in, in um, how we've done business over the past eight years. If you look at our budget um, that we released last year, uh, we include significant resources for cybersecurity. Unfortunately, Congress hasn't done a thing uh, about it. A more concrete data point would be just look at how we've handled um, this past year. In the um, summer and fall, we noticed an increase in probing and scanning of state election systems, 
as a result, uh, the president ordered his Department of Homeland Security to, um, to respond. And what we did is we stood up um, resources of the Department of Homeland and Security, which engaged uh, state offices uh, around the country, nearly every state. And we deployed experts. We worked with them to bolster their defense systems. Uh, we shared best practices. And we convened um, conference calls and uh, communications to, to share the latest information as we learned it. So this is something the president's been focused on for a while. But yes, uh, in the wake of, of the election, in the wake of this pattern that we've seen uh, fairly regularly in, uh, in, in recent elections here at the presidential <coughs> level in the United States, the president wanted to make sure that we were con uh, executing on an after action look at, uh, at, at what we've noticed over the past few years. The president has spoken with some regularity, it seems, to the president, with the president-elect. Has he told um, President-elect Trump about this review, and, and was there any reaction? Uh, Tamara, we uh, have acknowledged that the president and president-elect have uh, spoken. Uh, I think we're up to a handful of times. Um, and uh, But what we don't do is we don't read out those conversations in order to protect the president's ability to have uh, confidential conversations with the president-elect. When, when stakeholders will be told about the results of this, would those stakeholders include people like Hillary Clinton uh, and, and the Trump campaign? Again, I think uh, we just announced that, um, that this review is, is going to be um, underway. So as soon as we have a rollout plan uh, for its, uh, when it's submitted, we'll let you know. Uh, if the goal is to you know, obviously figure out if there was some type of uh, attempt to interfere with the elections and and past elections and share that with stakeholders, with Congress. Uh, obviously, we're talking about a, this broad uh, review uh, that's going to be pretty in depth. Is there a concern that the next administration, is the goal for the next administration to take some action as well, since the president only has 40 days left? And if so, is there a concern that the next administration, President elect Donald Trump, President Trump, won't act on that? Well, in terms of uh, what the next administration will do, it's, it's hard for me to speculate on that. So I'd refer you to the president-elect's team. I do think um, this exact issue surfaced a little bit earlier this week when the, well, maybe it was Friday, when the President's Commission on Enhancing National Cybersecurity released its report, um, which was a deep dive unrelated to the election, but looking at cybersecurity infrastructure around the United States. And there were some pieces in there that were actionable that we could probably work on and improve over the next 40, 45 days while the president's still in office. But there is a whole host of recommendations in that report that will not be able to be implemented uh, in the next 45 days. So this is going to be a challenge. I don't think it's a controversial statement to say this will be a challenge for the next administration uh, and the next Congress. We hope that Congress puts a little bit more muscle uh, into funding a lot of the uh, r requests um, for better resources um, and better support. Uh, but yes, this will be a problem that outlives this administration. And I do think the the report that was released Friday and presumably the report um, uh, that gets uh, turned in based on this review can provide a roadmap for, uh, for future uh, administrations uh, to tackle this. And Mark. Yeah, Eric, one more on the hacking. And to what degree or is this at all uh, a response to the Senate Democrats who wrote you, I guess, earlier this week, and the ones who say, look, we need more evidence to back up this general assertion that we've had, and that you would then, so how much of this review is to decide what can actually be made public to bolster the argument that the intelligence community has made? Uh, none. So that'll be a, a separate process. So as we've acknowledged here, we've received requests from members of Congress for, for briefings on this. And I think as Josh made clear yesterday, uh, we have been briefing them on this. Uh, there are certain committees with uh, unique jurisdiction uh, on these issues, so we make sure we brief them. Some of that has been classified briefings, some have been unclassified. But um, uh, we're also in touch with all members of Congress because we know there's wide interest on this. So we're happy to conduct those briefings. We're also happy to go through the process to figure out if there can be more material uh, that is unclassified in response to those requests. But this review um, is unrelated to requests by Congress. This is something the President directed uh, his national security team to conduct. 